So in this video, I'm going to show you guys what I do to get from this image and creating this photograph. And also at the end, I'm going to compare my photograph with the Hubble Space Telescope's photograph of the exact same target. And let's see if my roughly $15,000 setup can compare to a $16 billion space telescope. So when most people think about astrophotography, they of course think about the telescopes. Being out with your telescope in the forest or at some very, very dark location, taking images under a starry night sky. But in fact, most of the work, even the data collection is being done here. So there's a lot of sitting in front of the computer when you do astrophotography. To the point where I just wonder why do people even bother with red lights when they're out photographing. For me personally, I'm almost always looking at a screen. Whether it's the iPad or the phone, it messes up my dark, my dark scene. So red light is really something that I don't use that much when I do astrophotography. If I purposely want to look at the stars, I simply turn everything off and just enjoy that view for a while. So. Although the gear can be basically the same or very similar in many ways, the post-processing skills can vary a lot. So this video I'm going to show you guys how I work with my post-process to create the images that I create and how I do to pull out the details that I want to pull out and basically how I think. And by doing so I am thinking that I can show you guys that are interested in astrophotography but don't do it at all how these things work because they are really really cool and for those of you that already do astrophotography you might pick up a trick or two showing you guys what I do when I pull out the details and the data that I want from my photographs. So let's dive into the computer and give it a go. Okay so what we have here is the hydrogen of the unstretched linear image of the monkey head nebula. So this uh, is the final stacked and Craxbert version, meaning that I have removed the light pollution and I have also uh, cropped it so it's ready to use. So if I go to the screen transfer function here and press the nuke, we can see the big, um, the quick stretch, ugly stretch here that it does. And we can see the monkey hat with plenty of hydrogen alpha signal in it. So the first thing I do when I'm in this mode is, um, is the blur exterminator. So basically it's the default settings and I do blur extermination. So this is important to do in linear mode. I don't stretch it and do it, I do it before stretching. Um, linear mode is when your image uh, is uh, yeah, well linear, uh, meaning that all the data is crammed into a very, very little space in the histogram. And when you stretch it, you're basically taking the data and stretching it out on the entire spectrum of the histogram. So now you can see that the blur exterminator has done its job. Um, this is uh, the before and this is the after. Very, very nice the convolution. Next up is the noise extermination. And this one will remove all the excess noise that the stacking and the software has given me. And if we have a look here, this is the before. And this is the after, if this comes across in the video, I'm not sure. Um, I would do a small stretch here and then uh, do run star extermination. But for this image, I'm just going to ignore the star extermination because uh, uh, the stars aren't really a big problem here. So that's it for the linear mode. So if we just reset this here and go back to the original image you can see that it's all black and all the data is in a very very little place in the histogram so now it's time to move away from the linear mode and stretch the image and i do that with this tool the generalized hyperbolic stretch 
Oh, by the way, if you like this content, do give it a like. It helps me a lot as a creator and it also helps other people find my stuff because you're helping this video to reach more people. So the first thing I do is that I go to logarithmic um, and linear mode and I just select a black point. So I'm setting a new black point basically and then just resetting the tool and opening up a preview. Now this preview is what's going to give me um, uh, the options to have a look at the stretch that I'm doing. So moving back from the linear mode, uh, or sorry, from the logarithmic scale and going, zooming in a little bit and just selecting a spot here somewhere in the middle of the histogram, sending it to stretch point and uh, some generalized hyperbolic here and then I just start stretching and you can see the image is popping out here I'm stretching out the data so it is appearing here in the image so I don't want to go too far because then I'm getting this kind of image so I'm really trying to be mindful of the background here so somewhere around there is good I apply that and reset. So this is not a good image now, so I need to go back to linear mode and setting a new black point like so this time instead of going to the logarithmic, this is a bit easier. If I go too much, I'm cropping the data and I, won't, I don't want that. So somewhere just before the histogram data starts, I'm sending it to the black point and I apply it and reset the tool. All right, so next thing is that I would like to stretch some of the more fainter details of this monkey head nebula and I can do that by clicking on the image directly. You can see that it selects the stretching point for me here depending on where I click. So I'm clicking somewhere there which seems very dark but not extremely dark, sending it to stretch point and then carefully stretching it out a little bit more. Now I'm really mindful of the stars, the noise, the background because as you can see it's very easy to overdo it and I really don't want that. So somewhere around here maybe some local intensity as well just a little bit and apply reset so the last thing is of course to go back to linear mode and set to the black point one more time again looking at the background um, now I have stretched the oxygen in the sulfur layer already and I'm, what I do here is that I'm trying to be mindful of the background you can see that the oxygen data here in the background the dark the background is darker than it is on the hydrogen looking at the oxygen data in the background here we are and i guess one more time because it's not dark enough linear darker somewhere around there center black point apply reset and there we are we have a stretched hydrogen alpha filter which is quite quite the same as the oxygen layer so we have hydrogen alpha we have the oxygen and then we have the sulfur layer here so next up is the combination and I do that using pixel math. I just uh, go to saying that red is sulfur, the green is hydrogen and the blue is oxygen. And I will create a new image and say it's RGB color image and we'll run that. And here we go, we have a final SHO SH image. 
Now, as you can see, the green channel is the hydrogen channel and it's extremely dominant. So we need to normalize this one using network uh, narrowband normalization tool. Um, just go to preview mode again. And now it is an HOO. That's not what I have. I have the SHO. Voila. And uh, I usually try to preserve the lightness. Sometimes I go with hydrogen alpha. Sometimes I go preserve. Sometimes I turn it off depending on what kind of image I'm getting. Now this time I really do like the off here. So SCNR is just uh, removing the greens a little bit more and boosting the O3 is of course wanted. So around there maybe some S2 boost as well. Trying to make this basically trying to make this look good. And I'm pretty happy with that one. So there we are done with the network uh, narrowband normalization as well. Here we are then, the final SHO image in PixInsight. Now what I wanna do is that I wanna move on to Photoshop so I can do the final touching on this one and also have a look at the comparison with the, the Hubble Space Telescope photograph of this area here to see how they compare. So now we are in Photoshop and we can see the PixInsight image is uh, here and we have the Photoshop image here. So I'm duplicating this layer here and I duplicate it and then I go to screen mode, color dodge, um, which actually brightens up the bright areas and trying to keep the dark areas dark and maybe not that much. So I just bump down the opacity a little bit. You can see the before and the after because the nebulosity is really being affected here. And then I go to um, the selective colors and I'm looking at the dark here because it's a bit violet um, or magenta. So first of all I want to darken it up a little bit, very little plus one. And then I'm just dealing with the magenta part here trying to make it, uh, well, dark, black. The black needs to be black, basically. Um, so removing the magenta by bumping up the yellows towards the blues. There we are. So somewhere around there, I create a new layer and I create a layer based on the previous uh, edits that I did and go to camera raw mode. So this is uh, a destructive way of working, but because I created a layer, I'm feeling fairly confident in doing it like this. And I just go to lights and increase the contrast a little bit more, trying to make the nebulosity pop towards the background. Uh, maybe a bit more highlights. Um, shadows not that much white's trying to make again the nebulosity pop a little bit i will maybe add a little bit more vibrance to the image but not that much i feel it's very vibrant already and maybe color grading the shadows to again try
So that's it for this video. What do you think about the quality? Is it worth the 16 billion dollar difference for my telescope? I'll let you guys decide. For me, it's of course a big yes. The knowledge we gain from the Hubble Space Telescope is to me invaluable, and we should send way more telescopes up in space to learn more and explore more. So yeah, that's it for this video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And as usual, if you have, do give it a like, it helps a lot. And if you wanna see more of me, don't forget to subscribe. And as usual, do write your thoughts in the comment section. They're highly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Here. Not here, but at the computer. Let's do this. Okay, well, shit.